that's great. I mean, I think what's what's interesting about Bumble and we're seeing it play out is that Whitney Wolfhard's story is so wrapped up in the company. I mean, she founded, uh, I don't know if you mentioned, but she found she co-founded Tinder in 2012, and she was very much a part of that, that app and getting it off the ground and promoting it on college campuses. And a very acrimonious um, ending there. Uh, you know, she the she had an acrimonious fallout with another founder who had been a boyfriend, and she ended up firing, filing a sexual harassment lawsuit, a discrimination lawsuit. And you know, coming off that, she's talked openly about how difficult that period was in her life. And you know, she's being attacked on the internet. She thought her career was over. And out of the rubble of that, she really that's where Bumble came from, and that was the company that she formed in 2014. And Bumble, in many ways, has been her comeback story and her redemption. And I think, you know, when you think about what Bumble stands for, it's female empowerment, it's women swiping first, it's this kind of safe space amongst dating apps. So much of that, I think, came from Whitney's experience at Tinder. And so I think when you have that personal narrative wrapped up in a company, it makes it very powerful and it's really resonating with users. And now we're seeing it resonate with uh, with Wall Street. You make the point that she uses her own sort of personal story to sell Bumble. But I also find it interesting. You don't think that Bumble is going to be bigger than Tinder. <laughs> I don't know if I said that. I think they have they they have a lot of catching up to do. I mean, Tinder has a big head start, and especially internationally, it's it's gotten to a lot of territories before Bumble is. And you know, Bumble, the one challenge that it faces, especially when it's going global, is that you know it's 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 up against cultural norms. You know, there are areas around the world where you know it's not the norm for women to swipe first or women to have power. So they have that kind of extra layer. Of, of marketing and branding and tweaking their message a little bit, you know, depending on where they go. Whereas Tinder, I think it's just a much easier sell around the world. Um, so I think, you know, that is a challenge for Bumble, but I think Bumble, you know, Whitney talks a lot about Bumble being a lifestyle brand and it has, you know, Bumble BFF and Bumble Biz and they've gotten into brick and mortar a little. So I think you'll see Bumble expand in ways that go far beyond the, the dating app itself. Whereas a lot of its rivals, really, that, that's all it, it's about, is just, you know, trying to get users for that app. Yeah, I, I, think, I mean, obviously, she, she deserves as much credit uh, as she can get, right, for what she's done already to this point. I'm wondering what, what the biggest challenge ahead may be. Uh, you know, I think she wants to take the company international or maybe even, you know, uh, broader than it is already. Is, is that a challenge in and of itself? Yeah, definitely. I mean, as I said, those, those cultural norms when you're going into to places outside the U.S. is just every country is different. Um, you know, every area has has you know different different um, attitudes toward dating and towards women's roles. So that's definitely a challenge. Um, but I think you know they, they saw a great spike during the pandemic, and they're expanding their video usage, for example. So I think you'll just see them sort of tapping different different areas within the company to 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 kind of force growth there.